Norman Gimble and I were, were producing and writing an album for a young girl um, named Lori Lieberman. It was her first record. And we wanted to find an artist to work with and develop, like Backrack and David did with Dionne Warwick. So we met with a lot of singers, listened closely and carefully, and we found this one young girl, she was about 18 at the time, she had this beautiful sound. So we worked with her, we developed her, we got her a deal at Capitol Records. And the first album, um, we had nine songs finished, and we needed a tenth song to finish, and, and Capitol was anxious to have the album out. And they called and they said, come on, fellas, we need, we need a tenth song, we've got to get this album out. So sitting around uh, my house, uh, the three of us, Norman, Laurie, and myself, Norman had a book of, uh, of song titles that he sometimes looked at. And one of the titles was Killing Me Softly With His Blues, which is a line that he heard someplace, I think. And um, blues seemed like an old-fashioned word, you know, it didn't seem like you needed a song of blues in it. So he said, how about Killing Me Softly With a Song? And that sounded like an interesting topic. Well, he went home, he called me later, a few hours later with a title, with it, with it, with a lyric. Uh, it came to me right away. It must have taken me all of 10 minutes to write that song, maybe an hour. And uh, the next morning, we, uh, we got together the next day. We played it for Lori. And, uh, and she loved it right away. She said it reminded her of when she was in a nightclub and she, was, uh, she heard Don McLean sing. And uh, so we took her into the studio to record it. And I just didn't get the sound we needed in the studio. She, uh, she, as I say, she was a new recording artist. She had a beautiful sound. And uh, it just didn't sound quite the same in the studio, Capitals, it did in my house. So I had Capital send over the recording equipment to my house, and I'm pretty sure it was like Mother's Day, or maybe Valentine's Day or something like that, because I know my wife wasn't too happy that I had to be recording in my house, and she had to, she had to leave with the kids, because I had three kids, there's too much noise in the house. But in fact, we recorded Killing Me Soft for the first time with Laurie singing in my hallway, and the machines were in another room. And that was the, the, um, the version that actually went out. One of the things that Capital did for us uh, was they programmed that record on American Airlines. It was like the Theater in the Sky program. So at that time, I think people didn't bring their own cassette machines and things with them. I'm talking about 1973 now. Um, if people wanted to listen to music on a plane, they had pre-programmed music, which we still have, except now people bring their own CDs with them. Um, Roberta Flack was flying from Chicago to New York, and, uh, and she heard our song. She heard the album. She, uh, she tracked me down, and, she, and I, I, I very distinctly recall her voice. She was a big star. She had just finished. Uh, she had just won the, the Grammy Award, first time ever I saw your face, and she's a great artist. And she tracked me down at Paramount. I think she got my name through Quincy Jones. He had an office at A&M at the time. And, and I got a call I was, uh, at the, on a lot of Paramount Pictures. I was walking through the music library, and someone handed me a telephone and said, here, this is for you. And it was Roberta Flack, and she said, hi, this is Roberta Flack, and we haven't met, but I'm going to sing your songs. Anyway, uh, it, was, it was a moment that I, it's a story I've told a number of times, but it's a moment I'll never forget also, because it, it truly impacted my life. You know, that was my first hit record, and you, you asked me for did I know, so if, you never know what's going to be hit. You can only hope. But certainly before I ever had any hit, I couldn't predict the first hit, you know. Um, and then she didn't record it right away. Uh, I heard that she was performing, I, I read her view, <clears throat> that she was performing at the Dr. Chandler Pavilion, Roberta Flack, and that the stand that number of the night was killing me softly. So I said to my wife, let's go, just to see. I, I didn't know that, I hadn't spoken to her in all that time. And she did this song, and it was, it was great, but she hadn't quite found her way with it. You know, recently, I, I saw Roberta at the, um, in New York recently at the Songwriters Hall of Fame dinner, where she sang the song and, and presented me with the award. Um, and I, I was very touched by what she said, because I said, you know, just kind of amazing how you how you've found that song, you know, just on an airline. She said, that song found me, which is a nice play on, on the same thought, and I, I appreciate that. Anyway, um, then I didn't know that she, she recorded it. Um, I didn't even see her that night, frankly. Sometime later, 
I got a call from some music print house in Florida, I forget which one, maybe, maybe Columbia Songs, asking me if the print rights were available and killing me softly. No one ever asked me that question before. I said, yeah, why do you want to know? I said, well, it's an enormous hit. Don't you know that? I said, no, I didn't know that. I said, don't you read Billboard? I said, no, I don't read Billboard. Anyway, I ran out and, and, and what I remember, uh, it was all over Billboard. It was like, oh, I don't know, very 40 on the charts and climbs and talked about, played on every station, every place. And one column said, um, Kill Me Soft is gonna be bigger than tennis courts in California. Um, so that was my introduction, my first time to hearing about how I had a hit song. So it, was, it all kind of just happened, you know, and I wasn't even aware of it happening.